Hello, mamas. If you ever wonder what your favorite celebrity is up to at this very moment, um, you might think uh, maybe they're jet skiing. Maybe they're at a red carpet gala. Maybe they're going up and down Rodeo Drive in Los Angeles, blowing th tens of thousands of dollars. So it's a shock to many to see when the likes of Charlie D'Amelio, well, I don't know why I said the likes of. I actually don't know what it means when people say the likes of, but Charlie D'Amelio clocking the fucking working a shift at Walmart for uh, to, to promote her sister Dixie D'Amelio's popcorn brand, Be Happy Snacks, including flavors such as uh, unicorn or sorry, cotton candy. None of those words were in the Bible. But here we fucking are. There's a very, like, strange phenomenon that goes on in, like, extremely rich celebrities' heads that makes them think that, uh, oh no, oh no, I'm getting out of touch. Mm, what should, what, what, what could I do? I could, ah, uh, I could give away my money. No, no. I'm gonna cosplay as poor. And that's what we're gonna get into today, um, right after this quick break. <laughs> ah! Oh no, Jim Kardashian just hit me with their car. Um, and I, I, I need physical therapy. Oh gosh, where am I gonna go? Oh, wait, I use ZocDoc. I know that was a bit, but genuinely, I use ZocDoc for all my doctor needs. What is ZocDoc? It's a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online, okay? We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. It is a great service that, like, genuinely just, like, helps you with the annoying, tedious process of finding a doctor, which was literally I impossible, like, five years ago, at least before I even knew this service existed. Um, and if you want to check it out, you can go to ZocDoc.com slash mama and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash mama. ZocDoc.com slash mama. They keep me healthy, and I want my mamas to stay healthy. I don't know why I turned into Elvis, but uh, thanks for responding to this episode. Let's begin. So, this is not new. This is not groundbreaking seeing Charlie D'Amelio uh, scanning up items, ringing up customers at a Walmart. You see this all the time. Uh, most notably and uh, kind of big in big on – it was all over Twitter – was like Lana Del Rey randomly working at Waffle House and just like singing and serenading customers. It, it was strange, but I will say that like this probably – lands on the better side of rich celebrities cosplaying as poor or even just working class because you know i don't think there was any intent i i genuinely think lana del rey just wanted to clock in to waffle house and see what would happen and like sing to some customers and it's not like she perfectly positioned a cameraman to record her doing it like every video of lana del rey working at waffle house is like taken from across the room on like a grainy samsung like it feels very authentic and who the fuck am I to know and say if a celebrity is being authentic? Is that even possible? Probably not. But, um, you know, at least we have... It's a spectrum. It's truly a spectrum. Like, on the low spectrum is, uh, like, Charlie D'Amelio, like, literally promoting a popcorn line just because it's being sold at Walmart and, like, clocking in and, like, giving... Like, playing devil's advocate, giving her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she's just like, OMG, it would be fun to just, like... What, put on the uniform, work a day, see what would happen. After all, this is uh, a girl that blew up on social media from a, an extremely young age, has virtually no experience with the real world, probably. So, you know, maybe devil's advocate, once again, maybe it's cathartic. Maybe it's a nice uh, change of pace to just experience that. I don't know. But regardless, the fact of the matter is it is kind of tone deaf to do that when you're someone who is making probably like 15 million dollars a year um suddenly putting yourself in the shoes not like 
maybe out of a, a, a curiosity point of view, but like just doing a job that typically, typically Walmart cashiers are not able to just take the Walmart outfit off and then go back to their mansion. That is uh, probably never happens. Uh, what is the minimum wage in like US? Like the national federal minimum wage? Is, is it like $7? And especially where this happened, LA. Um, if you are a cashier at, at Walmart and you are working nine to five, like every single week, five days a week, you're not, that's not enough money to even live. California is so expensive and mind you, plenty of other states that you can, you genuinely cannot live off of minimum wage. Like it's actually fucking crazy. Like it, like to, you, you cannot have like your own home or your own place and li live off of say minimum wage, like McDonald's, Walmart, anything like that. Which is a whole other conversation to talk about how system, how broken the system is. But just, I want to say that to put into perspective how, it, you know, it gets people's panties in a little bit of a twist when celebrities do this. Because it, it being poor, being working class is not a costume to just put on for the day and be like, oh, I'm helping customers. It's reality for the majority of people, if you're in California, most people are, like, scraping by. And, you know, that's, like, kind of exacerbated by where we are right now with the economy, which I don't know fucking anything about. I don't know anything about the economy. J ask me about the economy. I will go fucking brain dead. I will go, like, instantly lobotomize. Like, there is, like, actually a ghost, like, standing in front of my fucking head with, like, a lobotomy toothpick. Like, waiting for someone to ask me about stocks, the economy, Bitcoin, crypt, any of that shit. And the second someone mentions that, the ghost takes the lobotomy pick and goes, and then right into my brain. And the frontal lobe gets shattered. And I lose all, like, I know nothing about the economy. At fucking all. But I know enough to know that it is not good. Right now. Obviously. Since COVID. It, like, more than ever, people are just scraping by. So, to do it, like, now is very strange. And uh, sorry, I'm, like, dogging on the D'Amelios so much. Sorry, D'Amelios. Like, you had your day at Walmart. But, like, this is also kind of uh, very apparent just kind of how out of touch celebrities are. Um, like what's coming to mind is like that video of Kendall Jenner, like trying to chop vegetables and like legitimately not knowing what the fuck to do. She's like, um, as her mom like watches in horror, like that is because Kendall Jenner has probably never chopped a fucking vegetable in her life to put like, let's like put ourselves in the shoes of these insanely rich celebrities. Almost every single point of contact that is requires any sort of like like a manual work or like tedious thought it, it that is completely removed from their lives. At every single point and this even extends down to like like some like influencers that I've met like have people like assistants or just like staff for every single thing so like obviously what comes to mind is like personal chefs that is i feel like something that people get like right off the bat as soon as they're like i don't know like famous um that boom like you never have to cook again you don't have to deal with dishes any of that stuff um next like laundry if you have like a maid or something they are doing your laundry you start to lose touch on like how to operate a fucking washing machine um, a driver, you never have to drive again because you have someone, you pay someone probably like a hundred thousand dollars a year to drive you wherever you go. Um, what the fuck does that leave? I'm trying to think like what you do in like a daily, a daily day. Uh, uh, I mean, that's already like a big chunk of things. So like over time, you don't know how to cook. And especially if you are famous from a young age, like the Jenners, the D'Amelios, um, they they never grew up with these skills and i don't know how much like their moms like teach i feel like maybe like these like nepo baby creators are like realizing hmm maybe my child would be would be clowned and dogged if i don't teach them like how to wipe their fucking ass or something so like 
I feel like maybe now there's like a little bit of self-awareness because the internet will just flame and raw like these celebrities when they just act a fool. But like, I feel like, listen, I don't know what the day-to-day lives are of these people, but I'm guessing like literally every single thing that adds like hours and hours onto most people's days is completely removed from their lives and that is a crazy thing to fucking do because that is part of the human experience to do your laundry and scrounge for food okay we were put on this fucking earth to like hunt down like wild boars with sticks and chances are you would get gored by the boar with its horns and then fucking die at the age of like 14 like that is how we are meant to be we are not meant to live lives where we have someone who is go driving to fucking erwan and spending a thousand dollars to make a a thousand dollar pizza for you to take a nibble at like that is not that is nowhere near in the human experience like the realm of human experience um or even human behavior we were meant to literally walk across the fucking desert to like find maybe a puddle of water to drink not have a personal driver to drive you around in like a chevrolet suburban that's fucking crazy we are supposed to be walking to the ocean with our our two shirts that we probably have to wash it in the ocean like i know i'm i'm we're getting off topic a little bit just like generally dogging on Um, like, rich celebrities, which is already fun to do, but, like, you know, I can't help myself sometimes. (sighs) So, you know, in the spirit of playing devil's advocate, I want to, like, try and figure out, like, why, what draws them to do it. Because there's no way that they, like, completely lack self-awareness, that they don't realize that it's corny to do that. I think that they genuinely like it. One thing that, like, kind of is ringing through my brain is, like, Burning Man, which is this huge festival. It's, like, an art, I think, music festival, too, uh, that takes place in the, the Nevada desert once a year. I, don't, I can't remember a fucking year to, or what month it is in. Uh, but it's basically, it started off as all these kind of, like, hippies and just, like, um, really art-centric people, people that were... Uh, you know, very, I would say probably down to earth, they would gather in the desert and just create art and probably have a lot of sex. And they, at the end of the, the, I think it's like a week long or something, they'd like burn this big effigy. And it was like a very like, I don't know if wholesome is the right word, but like, uh, it had a soul. It was an event that had a soul and wasn't like commercialized and commodified. And now... I didn't realize this until like a couple of years ago, but now apparently this event has been taken over by these like Silicon Valley billionaires and rich people across the world who fly in. Mind you, this this was an event where you're supposed to like camp out. You're supposed to like fucking drive in um, in like a little buggy with all your belongings and you're supposed to leave no trace. And now these like billionaires are like flying in on private jets to like throw like raves in the desert, um, completely defeating the purpose of the whole event and i think it's kind of similar to charlie d'amelio working at walmart they want to experience like struggle but from like a controlled environment like the private jet is waiting on the tarmac so as soon as they're sick of camping for like four hours they can dip but i have to mention that something very funny happened this most recent one it rained and there was a state of emergency declared because not one person could leave, could leave. even like these rich billionaires like diplo was like trying to get on like a golf cart to escape because it rained and made all the mud in this desert um so thick that no one could drive out and it literally became a state of emergency beautiful poetic justice i do feel bad for the people that like were just going because it's like a fun festival they would go to but fuck that's funny holy shit that's funny <laughs> um so yeah i don't know i l- let me like think for two minutes and like think about like why this ha- why they do this um right after this quick break you know what's like really awesome when you have a health issue um having to wait a to find a doctor and b 
finding out the doctor has the longest waiting time ever. And that is sarcasm, believe it or not. Um, but thankfully, ZocDoc is so amazing because you can find a doctor in as little as 24 to 48 hours, okay? The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 to 48 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments sometimes. Um, I literally don't know what the alternative is because I have never experienced, like, searching for a doctor as an adult. And thankfully, ZocDoc has come along, and I'll never have to deal with that. Um, and once you find the doc you book, you, once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more awkwardly waiting on hold with a receptionist. If you have phone anxiety like me, this is a big, big win. Um, but yeah, this is how I stay healthy. If you're wondering how I am just the pinnacle of health, uh, you can go to ZocDoc.com slash mama and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash mama. ZocDoc.com slash mama. Go check them out. Stay healthy for free. And thank you for sponsoring this episode. Let's continue. This first theory applies like mostly only to celebrities uh, and like influencers that are extremely rich. I think the reason why they do these stunts or just in general like post as if they are like struggling and they are just like you is because they are dying. They are dying to be relatable. This is the crux of like every celebrity and influencer. And without it, they become instantly obnoxious with very few exceptions. Like I'm, I think of like Jeffree Star and like Trish Paytas, people who are like, like live very extravagant lives, but like people still enjoy watching it because it's like almost like from an ironic standpoint i think i don't know uh but if you're not them if you're say like Haley bieber you're uh fucking joe rogan you're obviously rich out the fucking wazoo okay you fart and money comes out but you don't want to show that if you're these people because then all of a sudden, boom, there goes your relatability. So, you know, they, um, they'll, they'll like get paparazzi, like walking around the farmer's market with like their little tote bag. They will, um, they'll, they'll be seen like in an airport flying coach, even though they have like a private jet, things like that. I generally think that like the desire to be relatable and like feel like you're relatable uh, is what leads these celebrities to do these, like, bonkers, out-of-touch things, like, clock in a fucking Walmart. Um, now, the other theory, uh, which applies kind of, like, to all, because this applies to, like, billionaires that, like, don't really give a fuck about their self-image, like, uh, or, like, being relatable, like, Jeff Bezos, shit like that, Mark Zuckerberg, they don't give a fuck if you, if you think they're not relatable, because they're not! But, um, I think why they, uh, tend to do this, like, if you've ever, like, gone to Mark Zuckerberg's Instagram profile, it's very strange, it feels like something, like, your uncle would be posting, um, he'll be like, just tried this new surfboard, <laughs> love hitting the waves at this public park, even though he, like, bought a fucking island in Hawaii and, like, forced the residents off and, like, <laughs> use it as his own like little playpen that he sees like for maybe one month out of the year um i think that a lot of just rich people when you back to the original point when you like have someone to do literally everything for you from like wiping your ass to like cooking every single meal to driving you around you have no struggles really except for stuff that's like in your work which isn't exactly like fulfilling struggles like what i mean by fulfilling struggles is uh cooking the meal for like three fucking hours like baking a cake by yourself and you might have baked it two times before and it didn't work out and finally in the third try you get it right and it's the most rewarding feeling these insanely rich people do not feel reward like that the the reward mechanism in their brain that creates dopamine is fucking gone so my theory is that they do all these like silly like, rugged activities, like, I'm gonna camp along the PCH trail, um, is to feel that, to fucking feel something, maybe, 
because it, like it's almost like um suffering is like akin to like divinity and people who are really out of touch and because they're in oh awesome my light went out well now we're sitting in the fucking dark i don't care um people that are insanely rich fuck the light went out and it literally it that it's like literally the light bulb like meme where it's like ding light bulb but like the light bulb fucking went out and now i have no thoughts let me move my lamp closer to me so that it you know at least you can see me a little bit or something not that you would want to i don't know <sighs> suffering is akin to divinity what i mean by that is i think that's like a catholic thing maybe i don't know um it's like kind of like noble to suffer um and also i feel some people enjoy being pitied which maybe this is like in the same vein of that but rich people are the last the last people to be pitied and rightfully so because almost any single issue you have can be fixed with money and they say money doesn't buy happiness true but it can b fucking pave the road and like make that shit a rainbow road to the journey that is happiness and you know i feel like having <coughs> money like comes with a lot of problems too but overall it's gonna solve a lot more problems than it's gonna fucking create i think probably unless you're like a like you won the lotto max you won a billion dollars then people are like actually trying to assassinate you i don't fucking know that sounds stressful but i lost my train of thought <laughs> fuck <sighs> it's just like it's 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 we're at a time where like the veil truly has been lifted on celebrities. There's very few celebrities that, like, don't have social media, so they can't hide. Their full, true personalities are, like, kind of evident and apparent. And you can see who lives, like, gaudy, scary lifestyles. Even motherfuckers that you, like, wouldn't even expect. Like, bro, like, a Mindy Kaling. Um, what was she on? She was, like, the girl from The Office and then, like, went on to make a few shows. Like, she made, like, Never Have I Ever. To my fucking surprise, when I did this podcast episode, like, maybe like four months ago or something it was on that like celebrity chef who would make pizzas i i referenced this earlier in this episode too but like literally it was like my client wants me to make a two thousand dollar pizza from air one let's go sorry i was i was doing that voice like simulate like a like a millennial pause like and also millennial tiktok cadence but um to my surprise the person that this celebrity chef was making the two thousand dollar pizza for was fucking mindy kaling what 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 business does mindy kaling have just saying hey yeah actually i'm feeling a two thousand dollar pizza tonight you want to stop by erwan and just get some like gold leaf and like fucking can you get that a hundred dollar bottled water to make the pizza go out of even though the shit's still gonna just taste like delicio is delicio just in canada fuck i think i just alienated my whole audience i think delicio okay delicio is like de giorno but we have that in canada anyways um no blew my mind blew my fucking mind mindy kaling mindy kaling what are you doing make your own fucking pizza two thousand dollars okay sorry um but yeah it's like because just like that like social media lifts the veil on who celebrities truly are and if they are someone who at all needs to rely on being relatable fuck you're suddenly scrambling to do things you're suddenly scrambling to be just like you even though you live on a mountain above all the working class people of los angeles and have not cooked a meal in the past decade and have not driven yourself in the past decade so and you know you would think that like celebrities would learn now that they're under like a lot more scrutiny and 
like I feel like it was really since COVID that that shit really happened. Like the 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 Watergate for this stuff was that video that Gal Gadot made, where it was like imagine all the people, and it was like all the celebrities singing a little verse from there, being like like from their like multi million dollar mansions, being like we stand with the essential workers during this tough time. But me, though, I'm going to have a fucking ranger. So, like. Also, sorry, I've been screaming so much in this episode. And this is the same microphone that I use for my streaming, which I stream every weekend on now. Just tap in, tap in I'm on my YouTube channel. Tap in. Um, and I realized, like, how fucking bad it sounds when I scream. So I'm so sorry. I've been screaming so much on this episode. Look at Zendaya back there. I wonder what's that. See, the thing is, Zendaya is, like, this secret third thing. Because she, everyone knows she's probably so fucking rich. But we don't expect, like, her to be relatable, I feel. I feel like no one's being like, wait, Zendaya's just like me. <laughs> no. Like, I look at Zendaya and I see, like, a multi-millionaire. But I'm like, you've got to pass. I saw this meme and it was like, um... <laughs> I think it was like they were talking about Taylor Swift's like private jet use and this like Swifty replied and they were like I don't give a fuck she's my comfort billionaire and everyone's allowed one comfort billionaire and that's been sticking with me this week because like <clears throat> yes we should be critical of like these insanely out of touch people but at the same time like it's okay to just like follow them just like for funsies and be like what's Kylie Jenner up to what the fuck is she up to? Uh, what's Drake up to? I think Drake is my comfort billionaire. I think. Is he? Actually, he might not even be a billionaire. Um, And I think in some ways, like, it can be good, maybe. Uh, it can be aspirational to, like, follow an incredibly rich person. Just to see, like, hey. If I want to play the game of capitalism in the United States... Maybe I can end up like Kylie one day. And I don't think that's a horrible thing. Um, I think it's incredibly fucking unrealistic. And you have better chances of getting struck by lightning. Um, but if that's something that keeps you going. And isn't something that like you like compare yourself to. I think that's when it gets very dangerous. When like people are like. Uh, why, why do I have to drive right now? Why can't I be like Kylie Jenner? I don't think anyone's actually saying that. But you know, you fucking know what I mean. Um, and then this is, like, the whole beauty standard thing, which is, like, a whole other thing, but, oh, fuck. Um, what really cracks me up is when, like, celebrities will post, like, a picture with, like, uh, like, no makeup or anything and be like, this is the real me. This is when you really know that they're, like, trying to get, like, relatable points, like, relatable brownie points, like, fuck, like, I have acne, guys. Acne is real. And I have it. (laughs) And I'm just like you. So... Also, I'm trying to remember if I, fuck, I'm trying to remember if I, like, asked for drama on my last episode. I don't think I did. Fuck. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read off drama, but I need to go into the archives to find. By the way, if you want me to read your drama on a future episode of Drama Mama, just comment it. Just comment it down below. Fuck. Wait, before we get into that, I have a qualm. I have a qualm. So, I did a video. I have two qualms. Sorry. Okay. Let me think. First of all, I want to say it's so funny that, like, uh the last youtube video i posted was like cursing everyone that i hate and then i like had a change of heart and then the next day posted a podcast episode being like i'm done being a hater i think i'm being a hater again y'all no i'm not no i'm not no i'm not um second qualm is holy fuck i was not expecting to get this many comments about sniper wolf on my video like cursing people of people being like wait why are you cursing sniper wolf motherfucker i said in the video her crimes i literally listed them off i literally showed the wikipedia page for every single controversy she's had and also explained like the more recent drama of her like literally doxing someone and motherfuckers still were like wait but don't don't curse sniper wolf shut up um i love you though but for real if i can share one message with y'all check on youtube if you are subscribed to sniper wolf and if you are unsubscribe okay 
fuck, I'm looking for a drama. I'm looking for a drama. This is so live and so raw. See, I'm your comfort billionaire right now because I'm so live and so raw and don't prepare my podcast. I raw dog these shits and scroll through the YouTube comment section while recording to find a piece of drama to read. Um, okay, here we go. Ooh. Uh, hi, Ben. I love you and your content. I wasn't saying you to that. I was saying you to the drama. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. I used to be friends with this guy until he got really creepy, making essay comments on my crush's pictures and shit. And I recently found new friends who helped me through it, but this booty hole was talking absolute poop about me and my friend. I don't know what to do. He keeps trying to talk to me. I love you, Ben. Uh, if you get weird vibes from him, fuck him. You don't got to talk to him. You do not need to talk to him. If like He sounds so like desperate for companionship and you have every right to just not give it to him that especially if he's like a weirdo like i don't even know what essay comments he's making but you but bye loser bye little fucking loser little baby that's no friends um but yeah that's my i i'm curious to hear who's your comfort billionaire guys question of the week who is your comfort billionaire um with all being said, I will see you next Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. Um, go spit on your local billionaire. I'm not kidding. If I saw Jeff Bezos, oh, I could have literally turned my lantern up this whole time. Fuck. Um, I really think if if I just saw Jeff Bezos, I would spit on him. I think it'd be like be really satisfying. Uh, love you. And if I ever become a billionaire, this podcast will get deleted. Um, but I probably won't. Okay, take care. Bye, mamas. Bye.